Hey guys, it's Chris. From enormous diamond mines worth billions to journeying to the center of the Earth, here are 10 of the deepest holes ever. Number 10, the door to hell. Sometimes it's an accident that can cause a hole to be born into the world. And that's exactly what happened in Turkmenistan in 1971. And what happened was the creation of a 98-foot deep hole that is still a huge problem in the region today for various reasons. At the time, the nation was under Soviet rule. As such, the land was scanned for resources. Turns out, there was a pocket of methane gas within a certain area, so they set up a drilling station to retrieve it for harvesting which is very standard stuff for this kind of work. However, they underestimated the size and scope of the land underneath, and a pit began to form. The entire drilling station was forced into the hole that was now there. Thankfully, no lives were taken. Knowing that methane gas is dangerous and not wanting to put large volumes of it into the air, the workers decided to light the methane, which is flammable, and then just let it burn out. Again, it's kind of standard stuff for this line of work. However, that was their second underestimation, as the pit itself had such large reserves of methane that it continued to burn long after the match was metaphorically struck. In fact, it's still burning to this day, over 48 years later. The pit now stands 230 feet wide, and the way the fire still burns within the pit makes it look like a gate to the underworld, hence the name Door to Hell. Though dangerous, the hole is now a major tourist attraction in the area because people want to see the bright red rock hole for themselves. Number 9. Kimberley Diamond Mine In Africa, diamonds are a very valuable natural resource for the continent, bringing in billions of dollars. They're found in several countries, but one of the most interesting places where diamonds were found was without a doubt the Kimberley Diamond Mine in South Africa. What this piece of land might not convey at first glance was that it was once a hill. It really was. At one time, it was a hilly area, and then 50,000 workers came in with their pickaxes and started to dig, and they went deeper and deeper until the mine looked as many get to see it now. Like most mining projects, this wasn't a quick thing. In fact, it started in 1866 and stopped in 1914, all with manpower only. And by the time it was done, the mine was over 700 feet deep and over 1,500 feet wide. It soon got the name Big Hole, and it's not hard to see why. But here's the kicker. How productive were they in that digging all those years? Estimates say that over 6,000 pounds of diamonds were found in the mine. Unlike gold, you can't weigh a diamond and get a monetary value back. Diamonds have a much stricter gauge for their worth. However, even if every other diamond or so was valuable, 6,000 pounds of it is a fortune no matter which way you count it. Though the mine is now done as a work spot, it's a popular tourist destination, likely due to the history of it and all the diamonds that were once there. And now for number 8. But first, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on more videos like these. Number 8. Devil's Sinkhole Sinkholes are a natural phenomenon that are very dangerous, but they can also create some pretty wondrous stuff. The Devil's Sinkhole in Edwards County, Texas, for example, is one such place. This massive sinkhole that's a fully formed hole is 50 feet wide, and what's more, it's 350 feet deep. That's still not the most amazing part, though. Once you get all the way down, you'll find yourself in a cave, one that's populated by Mexican free-tailed bats, and tons of them, in fact. Now, technically, you can't go down there into the sinkhole. It's actually forbidden from happening. However, you can go and observe the devil's sinkhole, and if you time it right, you'll actually be able to see the bats flying out of the hole and into the sky. Number 7. German Super Deep Hole Boreholes are holes in the earth that were made by the hands and machines of man, and one of them is called the German Super Deep Hole, and it was a project that ended drilling in 1994. The intent was to dig as deep as possible into the earth, to find out what it was like down there both rock-wise and heat-wise. Yet one person had a different idea for the hole. Her name was Lot Given. She was an artist and had a question that she wanted answered. Mainly, what does the Earth sound like? She was laughed at when she proposed the question, for real scientists felt they already knew the answer. There was no sound. The Earth is too deep to make such sounds. But Given didn't believe them, so she did her own experiment. 
she lowered a geophone, a device that can pick up very faint sounds, and soon found out that the device recorded things just beyond the human hearing level, even then translated the ultrasonic waves into something people could hear via a computer program. And the result? A thunderstorm-like sound. And yet people could also hear what they felt sounded like a heartbeat. This is an interesting find because the planet is alive, so why wouldn't its core be kind of like a heart? Or at least that's what many noted after finding it. Number 6. Dean's Blue Hole The area around the Bahamas in regards to the water is full of many natural events, including sinkholes. One of these sinkholes actually filled with water to an incredible extent, and thus formed Dean's Blue Hole. It's called this not just because of who found it, but also because the color of the water-filled sinkhole actually gives the hole a different color of blue compared to the area around it. When you view it from above, you can see the clear distinction between the waters. To be clear, this is indeed a hole, and a very deep one in fact. Located off the coast of Long Island in the Bahamas, Dean's Blue Hole is 663 feet deep and is the second deepest blue hole in the world today, only behind the Dragon Hole in China. Weirdly enough, while this may appear to be a great area for sea life to live in, the chemicals that are within the waters due to its formation actually make it quite uninhabitable to most fish and creatures, especially the deeper you get into it. And speaking of depths, Dean's Blue Hole is actually home to one of the biggest competitions in the Bahamas, Vertical Blue, a free diving competition where divers attempt to go much deeper into the Blue Hole than others on a single dive. Number 5. Murney Mine Murney Mine, or Mer Mine, is a diamond mine so large it is rumored to suck down helicopters. It's one of the largest excavations in history. In regard to the width of the mine, it's about 3,900 feet wide, and for depth, it's 1,700 feet deep. Now, that's huge for a diamond mine or any hole on Earth, really. The mine itself was started by the leader of the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin, in 1955. And to this day, the mine is off limits to bystanders. So why is that? It's because even though they're not digging for diamonds anymore, they're still digging in the hole. Why? Well, we're not sure. Mysteries aside, the Murney mine has had many a tall tale raised about it, including that if a helicopter gets too close to the mine, the winds of the hole will actually suck it in, which technically is possible if the various forces of nature are at the right points. Expectations are that the Murney mine will continue to be operational for at least another 40 years. Number 4. Diavik Diamond Mine The Diavik Diamond Mine can be found in Canada. What might surprise you though is that despite its now apparent value, it was a mine that was started relatively recently. Work began on this mine in 2003, and it's still in use, so it hasn't reached its full potential yet. However, it's still got plenty to talk about. Location-wise, you can find the mine on East Island in Lac de Grasse, northeast of Yellowknife. Here's the catch though. You can't drive there or take a train or a boat. You have to fly into the mine to get there. And once you are there, your way of getting around is pretty restricted. There's a road in the area that connects the mine to a key building, and it's only wide enough for a truck. And even then, if the weather gets bad, the road is toast. It's probably good for excavations in order to protect it, and it probably helps a lot with security. Still, despite all of that, the Diavik Diamond Mine is a workhorse, and it gets over 3,000 pounds of diamonds out of the earth every single year. While exact measurements of the mine have not been given, it's clearly hundreds of feet wide and at least 100 or so feet deep. Number 3. Bingham County Mine Miners are known for making holes in the earth, but the Bingham County Mine definitely takes the cake, as it were, as one of the biggest around. This copper mine has been in use for over a century, and it's still open to this day. Plus, to this day, it's the biggest copper mine in the world. The mine itself is 2.5 miles wide and about three quarters of a mile deep at last count, and it's likely much bigger than that. That's why some people consider it the largest man-made excavation in the world. What's more, it's over 110 years old. Mining began there in 1906 and still goes on through 2019 and now into 2020. On a visual note, you can see the steps in the earth as the miners dug down, and it all leads to the center, which is still being mined. Now, you might think that this would be a place that a lot of people would want to go, and that's a correct assumption. In fact, the Bingham County Mine has been dubbed by the great state of Utah 
where the mine is located as a National Historic Landmark, which to be fair is kind of accurate. And because of the tourist appeal, the mine has a gift shop where people can go and get souvenirs. This mine has been productive in every single way, including filling out about 15% of the US's copper needs every year, just from this one mine. It also has gold, silver, and more within its grounds. Number two, Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory. There are many different kinds of holes in the Earth as you know, but for the University of Wisconsin, they wanted to do a study of the Earth from a different perspective. They decided to go to Antarctica and drill a massive hole into the very ice caps of the Earth to see what's down there. And thus, the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory was made. This may sound weird, but it's actually a viable practice. After all, the ice of the world's polar caps hides secrets and mysteries of the world that we can barely fathom. From remains of ancient creatures to actual viruses and diseases that were frozen in time, there's a lot to discover. Now, as for how they made this hole in the Antarctic, they went there during the summer season and used a literal hot water hose to melt the ice itself and dig its way down. It's not the easiest way to make a hole, but given their location, it might be the most clever. It took them seven years, but now the hole is about 8,000 feet deep. That's one and a half miles, give or take. Just as impressive is that they did this multiple times, as they have multiple holes in the Antarctic. And as for what they do now that they have them, they've put optic cables in them so they can see and give information to the people of Amundsen Scott South Pole Station. There are actually 86 separate optic cables that give such information. Number 1. Cola Super Deep Borehole have you ever wondered what's at the center of the Earth? Jules Verne asked the same question, and his book was a hit. Could you dig a hole all the way to China? Of course, the fact is no one really knows what's at the center of the Earth, which is why the Kola Super Deep Borehole is so important to both that discussion, history, and science of what that answer is. When you look at the entrance to the Kola Super Deep Borehole, you probably don't think much about it. It's only 9 inches wide, so it's not even a foot. But like the saying goes, you can't judge a book by its cover. And in this case, the cover of this borehole hides a 7.5 mile hole that was dug in the 1970s. So why was this hole even made? It was a time of political turmoil, when the space race was capturing the eyes of the world as man tried to set foot on the moon. Another race was going on between the United States and the Soviet Union. Mainly, they wanted to see who could drill the deepest into the Earth. It may have started out petty, but it became a race that would help us understand more what's inside our planet. The race began in the 60s. The US did their drilling off the coast of Mexico near the Pacific Ocean, whereas the Soviet Union decided to dig in the Kola Peninsula. Weirdly, the US side of the race had to stop in 1966. The reason? Well, lack of funding. The Soviets kept going though, and they kept going and going until they reached seven and a half miles beneath the Earth's crust. For the record, that's deeper than the deepest ocean on the planet. To be fair, this took a long time to fully make. The Soviet drilling started in 1970 and only stopped 24 years later in 1994. Want to guess the reason for that? Well, it's because the heat of where they were in the Earth made it so all the drill bits they had just melted. Furthermore, the rock at that layer behave weirdly, much different than scientists expected, and thus they were forced to stop. That being said, the samples that were found because of the drilling are invaluable and have not only changed how certain scientists feel the Earth's core is constructed, but they're still being examined to this day. You can still see the borehole if you go to Russia. However, since 2008, it's been sealed shut so you won't get to peek inside. It's unknown if we'll ever drill to the Earth's core, although many are trying to make that happen. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these deep holes in the Earth? Were you surprised that some of the deepest ones were made by man and not nature? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to World List, and I'll see you next time.